Hey, what's going on, guys? So today we're talking about a regular Yu-Gi-Oh! Market Watch. It's kind of like a special edition. Uh, well, it's really not. Like, I feel like the penny stocks are special. <laughs> um, this is just like a regular Yu-Gi-Oh! Market Watch. The reason I'm doing this is because the last few weeks, uh, the market's been kind of stale and stagnant. So I'm just doing a regular market watch. Um, now, I will say this. Even when I do regular market watches, I still have a very tough time convincing myself to drop like a hundred bucks on a card, or let's say hypothetically seventy dollars on Shatira Fenrir. But this will just be me entering into the world of regular market watch, stepping out of the five dollar bubble. So if you guys would like to see, I can do. By the way, I'm totally fine with doing two market watches every single week one penny stock one regular um if that's something that you like let me know by clicking the like button and commenting down below um feel free to go crazy on the dislikes though uh as we talk about these cards these are still the best selling cards i don't have like individual cards picked out that like i saw randomly on twitter or reddit or a buddy of mine were like bro did you see this car got bought out like i a lot of times i feel like and this is not any anybody but this is not anybody in particular I feel like a lot of times market watches are just like, man, if you bought this card two months ago, you'd be rich right now. Like, <laughs> thank you. That's awesome. But in like, case you haven't noticed, it's not two months ago. Uh, but anyway, we take a look at some of the best selling cards. This is going to be interesting because when we do the penny stock market watch, usually the higher end, the first best selling are also like the higher end most expensive cards but this might kind of just end up being all over the place um and 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 i'm also too i'm not gonna like i'm certain the main reason i'm doing this is to not reiterate myself so like the bestial package having three of the top four cards or top five cards no, i think it's one two three four five six seven eight nine best selling right so having three of the top five cards like literally it's pot of prosperity kashtira fenrir and i don't know what that was and bestial cards but i've already talked about bestial cards before right um very solid package we, we all know about bestial cards sprite blue doing its thing uh pre-sale of amazon defender amazing defenders is coming out um i haven't heard too much hype from this there's six you can get six booster packs from top choice gaming or 12 booster packs if you want to play that game, I don't necessarily love packs. I am a good, I, I, it's just like you can spend 60 bucks on a booster box or you can get like $61 lottery tickets or maybe like 30, 20 lottery tickets or like, um, you can get a 20, $20 lottery tickets and $21 lottery tickets. I think that math checks out. Or you can even get like six ten dollar lottery tickets, or you can get twelve five dollar lottery tickets. Like I, that's really for me. That's all I you know see booster box for, and like sixty bucks. I mean we can see the Darkwing Blast booster box is eighty six dollars, right? Like sixty bucks for a booster box is actually not that bad. Same with um, Legends Battles of Legends Crystal's Revenge booster box. I actually think this could be a good buy. Not just because it's the best-selling card, but because it's got Crystal Beast in it. And Crystal Beast is is such a huge fan-favorite archetype. Um, maybe the biggest one from GX. That or Elemental Heroes, obviously. Um, so that's not a terrible buy, especially considering it's the cheapest booster box on this page. Um, I would stare clear of this card. This card's just... It is, it is so obvious that this card's getting a reprint soon. Um, but if you desperately need it, it has gone... The, the thing is, though... More and more people are saying... This card's getting a reprint. And you can tell because the price is... Well, okay, recently it's gone up. But the recently, as in like the last month, it's gone up. But that's because two months ago, it shot way down. Right? So just... Be on the lookout for the reprinted version. It'll be cheaper. You know what to do. Um... Goes from the second, goes from the past, the second haunting, it's still doing its thing. Uh, 
Ghost from the Neck for a reason. It's even, it's just like a worse version of the original Ghost from the Past. If you control Fallen Vol Best, or if it is in your graveyard, you can special summon this card from your hand. During your main phase, you can fusion summon a level later higher fusion monster from your extract using materials. That's not that great. Oh, the tuner. I know the tuner. During the end phase, if a fusion monster was sent to the graveyard this turn, you can add this card from your graveyard to your hand. That's pretty cool. That's fun. I like this card. I don't know why I haven't read it. I think I haven't read it because, like, either Branded is terrible or, like, this card is. I think someone was like, you know, it's not that bad of a card. Let's buy it out. Right? This card's going to come back down, though. It's fine. Just the deck it's in doesn't equate the $20 price point. I have been super curious about this. This just package in general. Um, obviously, when we see this, uh, this should be a space of uh, view all versions, but there's only one, right? Um, if I scroll on down here, um, Faithful Adventure, Griffin Rider, Draco Back, or all relatively cheaper. We're missing a, we're missing one. <laughs> we're missing one. I forget its name. Has it been that long that I don't even remember the water monster's name? Um Don't tell me. I'm gonna get it. Um we'll probably see it. We'll see it. We'll just keep going. We'll we'll see it eventually. Or we won't. I'll completely forget about it. Um This card. Access code talk. So this card now has three printings, um, including two of them in the last kind of like year and a half. I don't think it's going to get another reprinting anytime soon. Now, if you're like me, you bought the Eldorado version for like 76 bucks during a kickback weekend. I think it was for Halloween or something like that. Uh, and you were like, dang it. I didn't realize they were going to do another version. But when we look at Access Code Talker in all three of these sets... It was a short printing. Short printed secret in Battles of Legends Christmas Revenge. Short pre short printing secret in Eternity Code. Short printing uh, premium gold in El Dorado. Will it ever return to the hundred dollar price point? No. Could it get to fifty dollars though? Now we're starting to have an interesting conversation because this card hasn't gone anywhere. No, the best deck is not a league based deck. Uh, but if I'm correct me if I'm wrong, I think Sprite runs this card. I'm pretty sure I've seen Sprite decks with it because the thing is you can easily make Access Code Talker and Sprite, right? And and Tier Elements isn't going to be the best forever, and this deck might be the best soon. And that's not a Link Summoning base deck ever, forever. Or that's not a Link Summoning base deck either. And a big thing is to where you might be hesitant with Access Code Talker is Borolo Dragon was great, and then I got Power Crap by Boral Sword. Boral Sword Dragon was great, but then I got Power Crap by Access Code. But the thing is with Access Code, because it's so... It, it, it's almost at that spot where it can't get Power Crap. And the reason is, is because of its clause of your opponent cannot activate response or effects in response to this mo this card effects activations. Right? Um, and like I said, I don't see it getting a reprint anytime soon. It literally just got one after literally just getting another one. So, I think Access Code Talker could be in a good spot where it could start to creep back up. Um, but, like I always say, spend your money, especially when it comes to this amount of money. Like, when I'm talking about penny stocks, and I'm saying buy, like, 50 of, like, a $2 card for 100 bucks, that's one thing. Um, or, like, buy 50 of a 50-cent card, and that's 25 bucks. That's one thing. But I'm saying buy one card for 25 bucks. It feels a little different, but... You know, spend your money how you feel. Maybe you think the Starlight Rare version of Exodia, the Forbidden One, is going to be worth it. I mean, in retrospect, it came out at three six three ninety one. It got all the way to three forty seven before now it is at five twenty seven. So in all actuality, if you do have money, this could be a one thousand dollar card at some point in its lifetime. Central Game Den is hoping so. Uh, top card shop is hoping so. I mean, we look at this card, like, there's like four printings. There's just eight listings. This is also 
how much a PS5 costs, right? So you got to go back and forth with it, right? Um, just something to keep in mind. This is moved. This this went down. It's because I looked at it. It's because I looked at it. Now it's already on the move. Um, welcome, Labyrinth. Special summon a Labyrinth monster from your deck. Interesting. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Um, this card. Fantastic. This is, this is just a fantastic card. What's cool about Triple Tactics Talent, we were just talking about Book of Eclipse on um, the Penny Stock Market Watch. And there's like six listings. Um, and we're talking about how one's $1 might become $2. I think worst case scenario, that's what this card's future is. Worst case scenario, something comes out, power creeps this card. Another thing comes out, power creeps this card again. And then another thing comes out, power creeps this card again. And it's still fine. It still has a pot of greed. It still has a change of heart. It still has a confiscation on it. I know it's circumstantial, but this is one of the better cards that's worth $12. Now, what's interesting about this is you have to use your crystal ball and go, okay, so I see the Rise of the Duels version on the far right is the most expensive. But then I also see that there are two ultra rare versions, one from a tin, one from Magnificent Maisons, that are around the same price. Which one will be more expensive? And usually, the easiest one to pick on is the one with the least amount of listings, right? But you do also kind of have to take a step further, right? Because some cards have listings like this one, where it's all just ones or two listings, one card, two card, one card, two card, one. But then there, there we just saw, you saw it, right? 198 from Gamer's Choice at 1475, right? Then we look at this one, 354, right? So this one has more listings and it has a listing that has more of it. So I would probably go and venture to guess that the better of the two investments between these two, if that's how you see Triple Tactics Talent, is the Magnificent Mavens version. Even though it's newer, they're both ultra rares and I believe tins were just open more because they're tins. Right, I think that's why we see more listings and more cards available of the right triple taxes talent. But I will say this: in those like scamming boxes, and I might buy one of those boxes soon. By the way, just letting you know, you know the boxes, the power cube boxes, like great value. You get a structure deck. You get 20 cards and a guaranteed rare. You know those you know those boxes I'm talking about that everybody's like, don't buy these. Tin packs never get used in those. Magnificent Mavens might. So like in five years, when Mag when you know they're still printing those little boxes, Magnificent Mavens might sneak its way in there. And the um, ultra rare version from the Megatons might go higher. That's probably not going to happen. I think that this is the best version to buy between these two. Um, and I think it's the best version in general. I do like the way the secret rare version of Rise of the Duelists' Triple Tactics Talent looks. But for that price, I can get... I can essentially get three copies of an ultra rare. That's where I always lie. I, al I always lie with that. I, I don't know why people... I don't know why people are like, look at these max rarity triple tactics talents, bro. It's like, round of applause for you spending your money like that. Um, let's go to the second page real quick. Um, another fantastic going second card. I don't love that it skips your battle phase. But we do see it all the time. And that's the thing about evenly matched is like this is another card where there's worst case scenario is like it's been super power crept but it's it's been around for a while like at this point like look at this this article's by doug zeef hey shout out to zeef uh but it's from six years ago five years ago really right like and also like this article is from a month ago of this being in it so this is almost always going to be a solid investment. If we look at all versions and play the game again of like which one is the best investment, because now there are five versions of evenly matched. All of them are above uh, 11 really $12, except one. So that's why I say the Magnificent Mavens version is probably the best one. 
Uh, now, that is the second time Magnificent Mavens has popped up. Was Magnificent Mavens on the first page as far as the box was concerned? I don't think so, which is interesting because it seems like the set has just an insane amount of value. Um, and it's been talked about a lot. Like, there's Infinite Impermanence. Again, there's Lightning Storm right next to it. Um, but it hasn't been bought a lot. Wait. I forgot it was a display box. <laughs> Wait. Strike what I just said. It's right here, isn't it? Yeah, there it is. Okay, so it has been bought a lot. All right. Um, well, let's just take a look at the boxes real quick. Um, so you can get five boxes... Um, or you can get unopened sleeves for 20. I, I, I still think even with a set like Magnificent Mavens, it's just smarter to just buy individual cards. I know if you spend 50 bucks on a box or three boxes or two boxes or however much 50 bucks would get you with Magnificent Mavens. And, and then all of a sudden you pull the best cards from Magnificent Mavens, which if we were just looking at it, like let's say you spend 50 bucks on Magnificent Mavens. Ooh, there's really not a way to do that. There's really not a way to make back 50 bucks. But let's say you spend 30 bucks on Magnificent Mavens and you pull talents evenly, infinite. You literally just pull the top five cards right there, right? So that's 22, that's 30, 40, 45, $30 turns into 45, launches on you, right? But, but. Come on, don't, don't be, don't be silly, okay? Don't be silly. I forgot this is in order of best selling. Wait, what is the, wait, wait one second, one second. This, this is, we're doing the, um, Dark Magician Girl. First off, why does Dark Magician Girl not have a ghost rare printing? I don't know. Second off, and more importantly, I mean, the Rhoda and the Necro Valley and the Red Eyes, I mean, there's actually a lot of really good, like, Ultra Pharaoh's reprint, Ultra Pharaoh's Rare. Um, okay. Okay. Okay, okay, it's making sense now. Because, see, I, or, I always order by best selling, and then when I go to the box, I always forget that it's ordered by best selling. Uh, but it's not a coincidence, right? Keep this in mind, Okay. Before we get all too overzealous of like four hundred dollars for a dark magician girl, I can pull that and I'm rich. A card is not worth anything. Like Jerry Beans Man, which is one second, the legend himself. If you've never read if you've never seen Jerry Beans Man, shame on you. Jerry Beans Man, there's no way that's worth eight dollars. Jerry Beans Man is actually a great example of what I'm talking about. Jerry Beans Man is not, this is not worth $8. I know if you go to the TCG Marketplace, you will see $7.45, $7.49, $7.75, $7. The first near mint version is 15 bucks, which is insane to me that Jerry Beans Man is, is it just the set? It's got to be the set, right? Okay, it's just the set. And it's also a meme card. And it's not that bad. $17.50 is not that bad. But anyway, especially for a level three, anyway. <laughs> You gotta find someone who's gonna buy Jerry Beans Man. Even these versions for 25 cents. Hey, do you want four copies of Jerry Beans Man for a dollar? No, I don't. Because what am I gonna do with four copies of Jerry Beans Man, right? Now, if we go back to Magnificent Mavens, right? I know we're all foaming at the mouth of the idea of pulling this card and selling it for $300 or pulling this card and selling it for $149 or pulling this card and selling it for $450, right? But you still have to sell it. And I know the best selling cards, we, we, these are the top 24 best selling cards and actually the box is in here and the um, display box is in here. So it's actually the best 22 best selling cards for Magnificent Mavens. Both the Dark Magician Girls are in here, but you have to pull them. Right when we go to page two, Chaos Hunter, totally awesome, um, triple tax talent, ultimate heroes. But then we're you know in Rota. But then like El Elder Entity Nestis, uh, Sky Striker, the Sword Soul card. Like, just be very careful. 
because you might pull this Necro Valley and go, bet, I spent 50 bucks on the display case, I made 100 bucks back, I'm so rich, lunch is on me, and you can't sell it. So just always keep that in mind. Like, this card, and that's what I always do, like, if I pulled this, this is, this is just coming from me, like, if I bought Magnificent Mavens, and I pulled this card... I would come right here and go, okay, cool, 295 bucks. 200, I might even go 285 bucks. So I can guarantee that it'll sell. But the, the danger of doing that, because it's happened to me before, the danger of doing that is you start to sell for 285 bucks, Galaxy Buster TCG sees that and goes, okay, 284 bucks. And now <laughs> people just start doing that, right? And now you're just, now you have the highest cost version of Dark Magician Girl. <laughs> Because you're the one that started it going low. So it's it's a very dangerous game when you start to try to sell those expensive of cards. But you can still make a lot of money. Right? But let me know what you guys think. What are the best cards that you were looking for? Under $5 or not? Let me know in the comments down below. If you guys want me to do more market watches like this. Uh, it was definitely different. That's fun. Different is always fun. Shout out to Chris. Shout out to Ash Blossom. Let's go. That's a penny stock right there. Three dollars. I told you to get it. You gotta get it. You go. You're not. You're gonna run out of chances. It's all highlighted for a reason. Let me know in the comments down below though if you want me to continue to do market watches like this. Make sure you guys click that like button, show your support for the channel, subscribe for even more content. Most importantly of all, have a good day.